I don't know if you heard, but your iPad is about to get a glow up. Every year, Apple hosts a huge event called WWDC where they announce all of their big updates for the year. So we basically get a sneak peek of everything that is going to be coming to our iPads later this year. The public version of this will be released sometime in the fall. And this year was a huge year for the iPad. It was really exciting because I got to go to California and attend the conference. I got my Apple hoodie merched up and I'm so excited to talk to you guys about all of the updates coming to our iPads. I understand it looks like I'm doing an Apple commercial because I am wearing an Apple hoodie, but I am gonna be honest about my reactions. So starting first, Apple's new design update called Liquid Glass. This is coming to all devices. It's also coming to your iPad and it basically makes everything super glossy, kind of translucent. Everything has a glass-like texture and feel. It makes everything look super sleek. I know people online kind of weren't the biggest fan of this. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Some people were saying that it makes it harder to read the different apps. So if you have a background that is a photo image that's really busy, it might be actually hard harder to read what apps you have. Usually I have a very simple background, like just a solid color or a gradient. So for me, it's not going to affect the readability of things too much, but I can see how for some people it might. I think that when you guys see it in person, you might change your mind because there's a lot of attention to detail, even just like some of the different control buttons, how they kind of have that glass-like texture. I think it looks really, really nice and really clean. I think it makes everything look super sleek. You can also change it out of the clear view and go to a tinted view or just your regular light or dark mode. All right, the next thing that we have is the multitasking. This is Apple's new windowing system. Basically, this is kind of like stage manager. This is like what stage manager wishes it was. <laughs> Essentially allows you to, whenever you turn on this windowing system, you can swipe up from the corner, adjust your screen to whatever size you want. You can stack different pages. You can stack them side by side. There is a bunch of options for you already preset for different orientations of your windows. You can swipe up to go to expose view, which just shows you a quick preview of all of your open windows. You can also turn this off completely if you don't want to bother with multitasking, if you can only handle with monotasking. I think this is great for people who need a few different things open at once. Maybe you're a student taking notes and studying, or maybe you just wanna like watch a YouTube video while you're drawing in Procreate. Also has a new set of controls in the upper left-hand corner that look very similar to the controls on your Mac to open, resize, or minimize a window. Those are coming to the iPad as well as the menu bar. So there's now a new menu bar with all of your controls like file, edit, insert, format, arrange, all of those things that you normally have on your MacBook. So that's why people are kind of asking, is the iPad becoming a MacBook? Do I actually need both if all of these changes are coming to the iPad? Because it kind of feels like they're slowly moving the iPad to be basically a MacBook. I mean, with the keyboard and all of these new features, it kind of feels like the same thing. And I actually got to do an interview with Craig from Apple. And so I asked him about the iPad as it grows alongside the MacBook. And here's what he had to say. We love the iPad. We are huge iPad fans. <laughs> <laughs> kind of seeing some similarities between iPad OS and Mac OS. Sure. <laughs> How do you see the iPad evolving alongside the Mac? We are hugely protective of iPad. It's the ultimate touch device. First, it was like, can we build iPad? And then it was like, oh, this phone thing might be kind of a good idea too. <laughs> but because iPad is, it's like you're just holding a touch experience, a piece of glass in your hand that can do anything. And uh, we don't wanna, we don't wanna lose that. The Mac gets to be the Mac, the iPad gets to be the iPad. What we have done more this year than I think at any time in the past is say, you know, if there is something where the way it's done on Mac is makes a ton of sense on iPad, let's not be different just to be different. We realize like, you know, we had a better answer for that since 1984, yeah. and that was the menu bar on the Mac. Um, why don't we do that? And so when it makes sense, we draw from the Mac, and honestly, when it makes sense and something's great on iPad, we bring it from iPad to the Mac, but still let the platforms be, you know, their own, their own unique thing. The next thing that also, again, kind of makes the iPad feel like it's becoming a MacBook is the new folder management system. So now you can also customize all of your folders. You can change the color, add icons or emojis, which obviously I'm very excited about because I love customization options. You can also add folders to your dock, which is really nice. So if there's a folder that you're using all of the time, I have a whole Flourish Planner folder 
on my desktop that I use constantly. So being able to have that right on the dock of my iPad will be super helpful. There is getting a pointier pointer. So if you have the Magic Keyboard or any keyboard, you know that it's been a circle cursor this whole time, but now they are switching to just the classic pointer mouse. We also have two new apps coming to the iPad. So first we have the preview app. This is just a PDF editing app. So you can mark up different PDFs like contracts, invoices, things like that. And you can also basically use it as a scanner. Your iPad's really just becoming a device that can do it all. And the second app that is coming is the journal app. So I'm so excited about this because Apple released the iPhone app, the journal a bit ago, and I've used that app quite a bit. And now it's finally coming to the iPad. So now you can use this to journal on your iPad. You can add different photos or songs, all different media types to your journal entry. And then of course you can use your Apple pencil to hand write on it with your journal. I also asked Craig about the journal app because I, you guys know I love to journal on my iPad. So I wanted to get more details about this app and here's what he had to say. You guys kind of snuck in that journal is yes. now coming to the <laughs> Absolutely. iPad, but we didn't get too much details about that. When we released the journal app for iPhone, the biggest single piece of feedback we got was people saying, hey, can you please bring it to iPad? One of the important things we did is we wanted the two to work together well, because as you know, a journal on the iPhone has the option of noticing places you've been and things like that to inspire you with journal entries. You aren't necessarily bringing your iPad to all of those places, and yet when you get home and it's time to journal, you'd like to have that as part of your prompt to say, hey, we noticed you went here, here, and here, you spent time with these people. We worked on the synchronization where your phone and iPad can communicate to each other privately, but still have uh, your iPad be able to give you the helpful suggestions that are informed by where you were and what you did with your, your iPhone. But then you have this bigger canvas on the iPad, which is great to see all the photos you may want to include or not, and great for using pencil, right? If you want to, and, and many people do want to uh, use that as a way of having a really personal journal entry. So it's really cool that it will be syncing with your iPhone. Like for example, if I went for a long run and I tracked it on my Apple Watch and I was listening to like Tame Impala the whole time, it would, would then prompt me later to be like, hey, journal about your run while listening to Tame Impala. And then you can easily add your run. You can add a little picture, a little screenshot of the Tame Impala album cover, maybe some songs that you were listening to, maybe a picture that you took. It'll prompt you with all of this right there in your app. So that way you can quickly just add a bunch of those media, write up a quick entry about how the run went, how you're feeling, and then you've just journaled for the day. So I really love the journal app and I'm really excited it's coming to the iPad. Another just super useful update that's coming is background tasks. Now, if you are exporting a video from Final Cut and you swipe up and you wanna go do something else, it will continue exporting in the background. So you don't have to stay on that window in order for it to fully export. You can swipe up, and go watch a YouTube video or go write a script for another video, whatever you need to do, and it will be exporting that in the background. There are some great updates to audio and video as well. First with audio, you can now record all of your audio with your iPad and you can use different controls like voice isolation. You can record studio quality audio with your AirPods on your iPad. And with local capture, you can capture both the video and the audio, which is perfect for podcasters. And then of course, you're getting a lot of the updates that are also coming to the iPhone. Like you can now add background images to your messages for the most part i'm excited about adding a background picture to messages but it's not like i just will pick a custom background for my messages and then my husband will have a custom background for his messages you both have to agree and pick one within that chat so i text my husband obviously a lot and on his phone he would probably want like a dark mode but then if i want mine to be like a pale yellow or something no matter what one of us picks will be the setting. You know what I mean? You have to both agree on what your vibe is going to be in your messages, which I just, I can't decide how to feel. What if people don't have the vibe that I want? You know what I mean? Like I would rather just be able to pick it for my messages and just have it be, that's my theme for all my messages. And then everybody else can pick the theme that they want. I don't want to have to agree to my husband's 
like Pokemon eye messaging background. You know what I mean? Also in the image playground, which is part of Apple intelligence, you can now combine different emojis. So I honestly feel like I don't really use Apple intelligence or Genmoji that much. I feel like whenever it was first announced, I was so pumped to create different emojis and use it all the time, but I really don't use it that much. They also have live translation and text messages, which is cool. So if you're communicating with somebody who doesn't speak your language, you can now do it over text really easily and it will just live translate back and forth. So that's awesome. So I'm really excited about these updates. I think they're cool. Let me know what you guys think below. Give me your honest opinions, your honest thoughts. Tell me which feature you guys are most excited to try out. I'll be really interested to play around with multitasking for sure. I'll definitely be making more videos whenever the public version comes out and I'll be showing you guys how to use it and giving full tutorials. And until then, we can just be patient and wait and let the developers do their things, find all the bugs. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys are having a great day. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.